we're at the beginning of a story and it's a story of the world within a rock there's quite a long build up to it though the sage of Asishta has been in Samadhi for 100 years and he had to find a particular spot he wasn't just going to go off into the forest or into a cave there were too many distractions there he went off into outer space where there were few elements and he meditated there and when he came out of his samadhi he heard a woman's voice a lady's sigh he didn't pay much attention to her originally but we're going to be finding out more about her soon but before I go into the story before we hear more about this lady it's very important to consider the mechanism by which we think that we know what is real. We've got this understanding that we're wandering around in a physical reality. We've got a physical body. There might be a part of ourselves deep inside that we don't feel is physical, like our thoughts. Our thoughts are private. Nobody really knows what's going on deep inside our physical body we're tucked away inside nobody else knows what's going on there's somehow an insubstantial part of us which is the real me the body's doing its thing it's getting old and repulsive um, but me I'm still the same inside isn't that how we feel and there's all this stuff going on out there so this is our understanding of reality it's an understanding which is shaken by physics. They're looking into, they assume that reality is made up of simpler things called atoms. But the atom is far from simple. In fact, the more they look into it, the more complex it gets. And they build these machines costing billions of dollars to smash up atoms and find out what they're made of. But it just keeps getting more and more complicated. But that aside, never mind what the physicists do. Why do we think there is a solid world out there? And it's basically all down to a sensation, which we label resistance. It's not going through each other, is it? So it's matter. It's solid. But then again, I could do that in a dream, couldn't I? I could do that in a dream. I could be sitting in a dream, recording a video and doing this. It's possible the hand might actually go through. In a dream, we're usually walking along the ground. Not always. We could be walking a few inches off the ground, but in general, we obey the laws of gravity, even though we can fly. We have eyes. We have senses. Do these senses work in the same way? Well, what are the senses? The senses give us information about this supposed external world in the form of electrical signals. And the great miracle is that these signals, they're the only information that we've got, and yet they get transformed into our whole subjective experience of the world. So this is an amazing thing, isn't it? Our mind, our brain even, is creating all our subjective experience. And this is what's happening in a dream, isn't it? In a dream, we're getting all this experience. We can say it's electrical activity in the brain. Perhaps we might distinguish that it's coming from a different source. But that's not a distinction which means anything to us. We don't know what that source is, it's purely hypothetical. It's all hypothetical. It's all notional. The point anyway is the reality of our dreams. The mechanism which creates our dreams is the same mechanism which creates our everyday experience. We call it the mind, but it doesn't really matter what it is. We could say it's consciousness, couldn't we? It's consciousness. Now this isn't just a 
a point of interest. It's something that we need to experience. If we get in touch with our sense of being, then all these notions of an external world do have as much relevance as a dream. We have all this multifaceted variety of experience when we're sleeping. And when we wake up, we slap the label dream on all of that. And in the same way, when we wake up to what we normally understand as waking physical reality, we can slap a label on it. And the label we can slap on is void. We can stamp it void. So this is really the basic existential attitude we need to take in order to get the most out of this story. In answer to the question concerning the lady, Vasishta said, She too, with a space body, stood with me in space. I had not noticed her earlier. Though she was endowed with a space body, she was able to communicate with me, who also had a space body, in a cultured voice and diction, even as in dream one speaks to another. So we have to bear this point in mind. It's as if in a dream. What sort of certainty do you have to assert the existence of the inner senses? We have bodies similar to them. This is true in my case, yours, hers and everything else. Just as one experiences warfare in one's dream, even so do people experience the events in this creation as if they were real. You are completely isolated in this sense. Only you experience your dream and only you experience your particular take on the waking reality. Just as nobody experiences directly what's going on in your dream, nobody experiences directly what is going on from your point of view. However, all illustrations are inadequate and truth is beyond words. If one were to ask, how do you see a dream? The answer would be, as you see it. All this is for your understanding. The truth is that this universe, as well as all that you see in your dream, is but Brahman. It's all consciousness. The dream reality is essentially non-different from our so-called waking reality. There is no essential difference between the dream state and this visible creation. That experience which immediately precedes the waking state is known as a dream. That experience or knowledge which arose in the beginning of the world creation is known as the waking state. The experience of the existence of the world is a long dream, or it is a void. It is pure consciousness because it is established in the eternal reality. You are the witness or observer of your own dream. Even so, the infinite consciousness is the observer of the long dream known as creation. Even as the observer and the observed are consciousness, that which is in the middle, the observing, is also pure, indivisible and unmodified consciousness. Such being the case, how can this creation be considered solid and substantial or material? Even the dream of embodied beings like you is immaterial. How can the long dream of infinite consciousness, which has no form, come to have form? Hence it is uncreated Brahman alone. It's all consciousness.